Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Hussein Kazal, and I have Rami Bishri with me. We're from uh, Nuage Networks, and we'll share with you uh, a little bit about Nuage and what we do and how you can use Nuage to offer basically a la carte uh, application deployment with service insertion in an OpenStack environment. So Nuage Networks, we are uh, based in Silicon Valley. We are a venture uh, of uh, Nokia that is focused on basically improve, providing the scale and performance offered uh, to service providers with um, uh, proprietary hardware to a virtualized software-defined networking solution in the data center. The, the value proposition is basically we're an open, high-performance, uh, uh, scalable SDN solution that works with any workload, whether it's uh, virtual, physical, or container-based, um, anywhere in one data center or multiple data centers over any physical infrastructure. You're not really tied to one particular uh, vendor. And we've been a member, uh, along, uh, a member of the OpenStack community with uh, Code and Icehouse, Juno, Kilo, Liberty, and of course, uh, Mitaka. So just to give you an overview of the, the solution, uh, the solution comes in three virtual components. Uh, the topmost layer, which is the management layer, it's called the virtualized service directory, and that's basically where the policy management happens. That's where you do the service insertion. That's where you create uh, predefined te networking templates that uh, you can reuse your application. You can redeploy an application x number of times using the same template, and then only having to go back and modify the template. So that simplifies uh, the security administrator, networks administrator's job by having control while giving application developers the flexibility to, to kind of work within a, a protected environment. Uh, it has a northbound API, which basically supports OpenStack, all of the distros uh, from Red Hat, Canonical, IBM, uh, Mirantis. Uh, we also support CloudStack, um, as well as VMware vCenter. So we have plugins. Um, some of our customers have their own uh, code that sits on top that basically custom built that use our APIs. Um, on the second layer is the control plane, which is based on our 7x50 platform, which is basically a, a high-end uh, performance router that we virtualize the control plane. So you basically get uh, BGP, I, all of the routing protocols, and you get the scale. So as your, the number of servers increases, you keep adding controllers that are federated. And you can actually, you're not bound to one data center, but you can span across data centers you can peer with traditional routers, and, and that's how you kind of grow your data center and, and workloads. Um, also, on the VRS uh, side, which is the lowest uh, uh, layer, uh, we have basically an OVS-based uh, virtual routing switching instance that sits on the hypervisor. And we support all of the hypervisors. We support uh, Hyper-V, uh, KVM, uh, Zen. Um, so basically, you can have one solution, um, the, and as well as ESXi. You have one solution that covers all of your needs, whether it's today you're using one hypervisor and moving to another, or you have different groups that have different needs. Uh, you have the one solution that offers you anything on the hypervisor, uh, can scale on the control plane, and provides you that programmability um, on the management scale. Um, we also now, networking is only one piece of it. Obviously, there's in the data center, there are multiple uh, solutions, whether it's security, load balancing, IPAM. So we've part we have a rich partner ecosystem from market leaders on the cloud consumption layer, all of the OpenStack distros we've certified with, um, as well as security appliances, uh, application delivery controllers. On the networking side, we have Arista, Dell, HP, obviously. Um, and then we've added, uh, recently, uh, we've added partners such as Radware, Checkpoint, uh, Brocade, uh, Nokia Vital QIP, and, and we've certified with IBM ICMO. So um, what's important here is that we're focusing on, uh, you know, obviously market leaders. Be we want to make sure that uh, when you select Nuage, we still offer you that choice, freedom of choice, whether it's a hardware appliance, whether it's a, um, a service appliance, and you'll be able to build best of breed uh, solutions. And what's making it easy for us is that we actually use that programmability of the network by uh, open sourcing our VSPK, where partners can leverage uh, that programmability of the network to kind of integrate with Nuage. So 
you can basically uh, build your own connectors to pull information or analytics or stats from uh, Nuage and push it to those devices. So it's available on GitHub for people who want to take it uh, for a spin. Um, and then uh, we basically started uh, six months ago a certification process where we basically invite partners to uh, certify their uh, products and solutions on Nuage to make sure that they can go to cust customers, have the confidence to say that this integration has been certified by Nuage. Um, so we've certified, we had uh, Palo Alto, Fortinet, um, and the VMware GuardiCore counterattack, uh, last OpenStack, and we've recently added Checkpoint, Radware, uh, Brocade, and Navi. So the certification process, again, it's self-initiated. We create an environment, we create a test plan, the partner self-certifies, and then they submit the results, and we uh, basically approve them and um, share that on our website. Uh, and now we're actually going to switch to uh, a live demo to show you basically uh, what does, and Remy's going to take over. Hi, everyone. So You don't need this one. Yeah. Yeah. Can you switch to the... No, the, other, the, the previous one, just one slide and then... So what we want to show you in this demo is uh, that you can uh, quickly spin up application on OpenStack using um, Nuage Networks plus OpenStack using uh, Python script or Ansible playbooks. In this case, we'll deploy like an application which is composed of uh, free app servers and one database uh, using Ansible, and we'll load balance everything uh, using Elbas v2. So we have our, our own implementation of Elbas v2. So we'll load balance all these web servers, and the traffic which go from the web servers to the DB to the DB will get redirected to a firewall, and that type of architecture can be implemented with any uh, partner certified with Nuage. So basically. If you do take like any security vendors, you can plug their firewall and do the exact same thing, like steering the traffic to the firewall. It could be a virtual firewall or a physical one, or it could be a physical load balancer or a virtual one, or even a, a container load balancer. So let's switch to the demo. So just to give you an overview, uh, this is our OpenStack environment. We have already deployed uh, the firewall, and the firewall connector will push policies and information to the firewall based on our uh, um, REST API. So the firewall connector will put information from our um, management platform and push some object like IP addresses, subnets, zone to the firewall. So you'll be able directly from the firewall to configure object that you can be having, for example, in OpenStack. So uh, if you configure a security group in OpenStack, you'll get the same security group in your firewall because we'll synchronize everything. We already deploy also the network topology as if like uh, an OpenStack administrator already, already give you um, like um, a blueprint of what the application should be. So what we'll focus is on just deploying the application on top and configuring the, the load balancer to load balance the traffic. So in the first part, we'll have to check some of the things that the blueprint is already configured and so on. And um, if we go to the OpenStack platform, so we'll uh, deploy a new uh, it, it template. So basically, what was already deployed was deployed using only it templates. We didn't use like any manual commands and so on to deploy. So what we wanted to show is that using it templates, basic it templates, you can deploy your full topology, steer the traffic to your firewall, deploy your load balancer. So you can do everything using it templates and new networks. So now our uh, demo application is currently deploying. 
And if we go to instances, we'll see that the DB server is getting deployed. And we are starting like to put some application servers. So our application is currently deployed. And if we go back there, so what we'll be doing is we'll create a new load balancer using the Elbas v2 API. So we wrote our own modules to, um, to talk to the Elbas v2 API, which is like we'll open source all the modules because that's only using the Elbas v2 API. And what we'll do is we'll create new members based on the e templates we just deployed. So we'll add the application servers to the load balancer. So if we switch to the application, which is not really fancy, but that's live demos. <laughs> Server are still booting, that's why. Just to give you like uh, why it's like getting a little bit slow to deploy is we are using OpenStack plus Nuage to deploy um, OpenStack plus Nuage labs on top. So we have like multiple nested environments for partners to certify. And all our partners will have like the same thing. So we'll give us, um, um, we'll give them the, um, a full OpenStack plus Nuage environment, so they can directly do whatever they want on the environment to be certified. So that's why we have this plat we have built a platform on top of OpenStack to um, to deploy labs for our partners. So our application is deployed. And normally, if we refresh, we'll see that the server is changing. Like every time we'll hit a refresh. It, it depends because there is like a lot of JavaScript also. So it's getting load balanced. So from that, we, we didn't do anything really fancy. You can do it like using plain neutron and so on. The, the second part of the demo is um, we want to show you that you can have also containers workloads. So not only have VMs, I think most, maybe most of you are planning to have like conta containers in the data center. So what we, we want to show you is that you can, without touching any, not the topology, not the policy, you'll be able to plug containers directly in the same network you have defined OpenStack and load, ba load balance them using the same load balancer. So we'll go through like the, the same steps. And I will just go to our um, VSD UI. So we see that we have like our app network and we have like some VMs, which are the, the app servers, the, the, the load balancer, and as well as the firewall. And if we go to policies, we'll see that we have a bunch of policies which are mapped to security groups in OpenStack. So as soon as we plug a VM in OpenStack in a security group, we'll see the VM appears directly in our policy group. And those policy group will be synchronized to like any any type of firewalls. So basically all our partners 
leverage our API to retrieve all this information. So if you take, for example, a Palo Alto Networks firewall, you'll, get, you'll be able to have all this object in your firewall. Or if you take a Fortinet firewall, it will be the same thing, or checkpoint, exact same thing. So just to show you quickly how uh, we can, for example, see the, the rules. So for example, in this case, we, we have developed a small firewall based on IP tables using, and using a REST API. And we are pushing all the information from our VSD, which are taken from already from OpenStack to the firewall. So you can see that you have all the zones, subnets, policy group. And we'll be able to, um, to do, for example, a new rule based, based on this specific group. So for example, if I, if I come there and select, uh, I want to allow from app security group to DB security group. And for example, only port, I don't know, uh, 27, because it's a MongoDB server. And we had this specific policy group. If we click on the, on the, on the small um, info, we'll see that we have currently free hub servers, which are the free servers we deployed at the first time. We are currently deploying, so on the other side, we are currently deploying the containers application. So all the containers are deployed. We just deploy like 10 containers of the same application. And we are retrieving the IP, IP address and reconfigure the, the load balancer using these IP addresses. So we'll create a new member like we did for the VMs for every container that was spawned on a Docker host. Um, we are not only supporting like Docker hosts, we can support Mesosphere, Kubernetes, so everything that can run Docker containers or can, can be supported. We, we don't have like any real tight integration. The only thing that we have to install is uh, we have to install our VRS on each hypervisor or Docker host, and we'll be able to connect your container or your VM to the same network. If we came back in, uh, so in VSD, we, we see that we have a lot more um, V ports in this policy group, which are both the VMs and the containers. And if we go to design, we'll see that. In the app set that we'll have both containers and VMs. So we, we have like used the same um, subnet defined in, in, in OpenStack to deploy as well your, your container. And if we go there and refresh oh, this one, okay. Um, oh, this one. We'll see that now it's not like app server or something. It's the container ID that is getting spawned. So if we refresh, we'll see that you'll be load balanced between all the Docker containers we just deployed. So we didn't change anything on OpenStack. The only thing that we did is we deployed Docker containers on a separate Docker host and connect them to the same network. OK. So just uh, so what does this mean? Uh, so I'll give you a use case. So in the partner program, we are, as you see, the, the, the solution is flexible. So multiple CMSs, multiple hypervisors, multiple partners, and there's only three of us in the team. So we actually use that platform, New Agent OpenStack, uh, with using Heat templates to spin up these environments where partners can self-certify. So with, I mean, the, the use case is very simple. We have different stakeholders. We have engineers. We have sales. We have marketing that want to use this uh, interface, and not everybody can install OpenStack, obviously, or configure it. So this takes away a lot of the, the legwork that you know, usually is uncertain at the end, you're successful or not. So it saves us a lot of time. It saves us a lot of money, obviously. And what's good about it is that if you have shadow IT, that people running to AWS and all that, environments like this help bring them back. And if, um, this is the next slide. So we basically track, obviously, we did an ROI. Um, on a, we got a return investment within three months. And we have a lot of users using this because it's so easy and so trivial to, to kind of uh, uh, 
uh, use. So, so we are at the Nokia booth. If you want to come and see the demo, interact with it, more than happy to show you. We have sessions uh, on Wednesday, and you can come to the booth and have a full schedule. And we have uh, giveaways uh, right next to that screen, please. Umbrellas in case it's going to get wet outside, and T-shirts. Thank you very much. Thank time. you.